Oshkosh Media, opening access to local government on GovTV, providing a community voice on Life TV, and community-based radio on Oshkosh FM. Welcome to the City Manager's Report. The City Manager's Report, a look at city updates and municipal news, and a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. Your hosts, Emily Springstrow of Oshkosh Media, and City Manager Mark Roloff. everyone and thank you for joining us on GovTV for your city manager's report, your source for all of the latest and greatest news and updates going on in the city of Oshkosh as well as a preview of the city council meeting uh, coming up next week. I'm your host Emily Springstrow joined as always by your city manager Mark Roloff. So welcome Mark, thanks for joining us today. Great to be here Emily. So as always we've got a packed show. We're going to go ahead and dive into our hot topics for the first half, take a little break and then return with a preview of the upcoming city council uh, meeting agenda for Tuesday, August 8th, 2017. So, Mark, first thing that we want to talk about here uh, is kind of give a little bit of a recap, I guess, is Neighborhood Night Out was this week, uh, Tuesday night, and kind of give us a little bit of an overview of how it went and what it is. Oh, it's a wonderful event. Uh, there are 10 neighborhood uh, events that took place throughout uh, neighborhoods throughout the Oshkosh area. Uh, I was able to make seven of them, and uh, it was a, a long evening for uh, Chief Smith and I, but... <laughs> It was an opportunity for, for neighbors to get together uh, under the, the whole uh, theme of getting to know each other, making neighborhoods stronger by, by knowing each other, looking out for one another. Mm -hmm. There is certainly a law enforcement twist to that because uh, the neighbors uh, become, become our eyes and ears. So we had plenty of uh, things to show them. We had officers on bicycles, motorcycles, in our uh, community outreach vehicle. Uh, fire department was there. So we had folks from uh, all different uh, areas of the police department and then other city departments. Planning was out there because they work so closely with our neighborhood associations. And just in general, uh, just getting to talk to neighbors. I had a great time. Uh, got people giving me their uh, two cents on a variety of topics and that's okay. <laughs> that's what it's all about. And uh, uh, it's just nice to, to hear input whether it's uh, critical good or critical not so good. So we get a good feel for where uh, residents are and where they would like things to go in the city. Definitely, and this is a national celebration. So this goes on throughout the, the U.S. Um, we focus really a lot on the neighborhoods, the neighborhood associations. And like you said, it's just so great to, to know your neighbors and get to know who's around you, who's living around you, and talk about the issues that you want to fix and things that you like and dislike. So uh, very happy for another successful neighborhood night out. Yeah, absolutely. Next up on our list, Mark, is the budget workshop. We had one on July 26th. Give us a little recap of what happened. What were some of the main themes and discussion points that you talked about? This is the first of what will be six budget workshops. And so this being the first uh, in the process, we have three that are with council before the budget is actually delivered to them to get insight from them and give them and prepare them for where we think things are going and then afterwards they'll be talking about the budget that's been presented to them. Uh, the first one was doing a lot of forecasting in terms of where we think uh, we're going to be for this year 2017 and then where we think costs are going in terms of things for 2018. Uh, get some preliminary direction from council based on the, that information and obviously uh, the main cost drivers are something we talk about and primarily those are personnel costs because uh, in our general fund that's three quarters of our entire budget. Mm -hmm. In a department like police and fire it's actually greater than 90 percent of our budget is personnel so wages and benefits are certainly a huge part of that. So we went through all of the assumptions that we we put together when we're giving initial direction to departments. Council was able to give us some direction in concerns they have. They certainly want to uh, maintain our tax rate, keep that as low as possible. Mm -hmm. And there are challenges with that because state aid is, is frozen or declining. And that's been going on for a number of years. So every time there's a cut at the state level, 
the local property tax uh, seems to be the one that takes the brunt of the hit. And that can't sustain itself forever. So mm -hmm. those are the types of topics that we, we went over with the council and got some, some good discussion. And it's the tapes available for people to watch. It is, yes. You can watch it online at oshkoshmedia.org. Um, on our website, just click on GovTV and the video is right there. Uh, so it sounds like a lot was discussed and we've got a lot to, to talk about in the upcoming budget workshops. So we've got, qu uh, how many budget workshops do we have coming up ahead? We have process? five more okay. and the next will be on Tuesday, August 29th. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be 5 to 7 p.m. We'll get our uh, audit from 2016 to kind of gives council a bearing on where we where we started the year and observations that our auditors made in terms of uh, areas of concern that they may want to make council aware of because they have to report to council uh, everything that they see and then we'll just give them some more uh, more information on where departments where we think departments are going and of course where state aid is going state budget hasn't been adopted yet so we don't even know for sure exactly where some of those revenues are going to be from the state. We get, you know, 20, 25% of our general fund revenues from the state itself. So we're very dependent on that and we have to make sure that we're uh, doing everything we can to maximize those dollars. Definitely. So still in the early phases, we look forward to a lot more discussion and a lot more detail as, um, you know, different things come out and um, as that discussion continues. So moving on, we got to talk about South Park. Now, this was a huge item of discussion on Facebook, social media, and we've gotten the message out about what exactly is going on out there. And now the, the construction is starting to impact traffic. So tell us what the latest update on the South Park project is. Well, the, unfortunately, some driving lanes on South Park Avenue are going to be impacted, and that's going to start on August 7th. And basically, the main, uh, the main stretch of South Park in front of the park between Georgia uh, Street and Ohio Street, it's going to be restricted for about six weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very necessary in order to make uh, all the improvements in the park happen because there's a lot of connections into our, uh, our utility systems mm -hmm. that are coming off of South Park. And the main reason for this one is for storm sewer installation. And that's something that, again, a lot of people didn't realize as part of the South Park project is storm water management. Um, and so, so this is a really big, uh, I think it, 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 they're replacing the old storm sewer with a, a bigger one that can contain more. Correct. I mean, there's, there's more water that's going to be going into South Park and more water going out. And we are increasing the size of the storm sewer out there on South Park Avenue. Mm -hmm. And because of how big that storm sewer is going to be, there's a lot of excavating. And as a result, you really need to close a traffic lane to do that. It's gonna be tight there. You're gonna to have to be going very slow. It'll be a little disruptive at the beginning of the school year over by South Park School. Mm -hmm. So, you know, warn parents, plan. If you're dropping your kids off, plan to leave a little bit earlier than you normally would, especially those first couple days until you get used to the routine. But for the first few weeks of school, it's likely going to be impacted. Okay, so we, we do appreciate people's patience. And like you said, just plan ahead, be cautious. Um, if you'd like emails directly uh, sent directly to your inbox on updates for the South Park Construction Project, just go to the city website, go to the Public Works page. They have a link there. And for not only this project, but for any other project that's going on, you can get email updates sent directly to your inbox. It's really nice. Um, and you can kind of get the play-by-play -play of what's going on out there. And of course, we have to say, you know, even though all this stuff's going on at South Park, that is not impacting uh, being able to enjoy South Park. And one of those things that we can enjoy is coming up uh, next Friday, August 11th, Food Truck Friday. Our third and final installment on Food Truck Friday, which benefits the Oshkosh Senior Center. Uh, I went to the last one and it was just mobbed. So <laughs> get there early or just be a little patient. Mm -hmm. But it's there's so many things going on. Even with the construction going on, there, the uh, recreational amenities, the splash pad, the playground, those are all operational. Um, and uh, if you get there too late, plan to walk because mm -hmm. it's, uh, and it's not because some parking is restricted at the park. There is a little, but there were cars parked all the way back to Knapp Street when I got there. Yep. So be prepared, but we've got 10 food vendors that are there. It is so fun. It is, it is a blast. <laughs> it's, if you want to talk about family friendly, mm -hmm. this is the epitome of family friendliness. And you know, what's not to love about having a hot dog and, and running around the park on a Friday afternoon? Exactly. Uh, and that's me, and I, you know, I'm not <laughs> even a kid. So absolutely, um, 
if you haven't been there yet, uh, certainly consider bringing your family out. It's a wonderful sense of community that you get with these types of events. And I certainly enjoyed it, and I'd recommend it to anybody. Definitely. So Friday, August 11th, 5 to 9 p.m., 10 food trucks, live music, a lot of fun. We hope that we can see everybody there for the last food truck Friday of the summer. Now, moving on in our list of things we want to discuss, of course, we do want to hit on the police incident that happened earlier this week, Mark. Um, why don't you kind of give us a little bit of an overview of the, the situation? What's the latest status on this, this item here? Well, I think uh, rather than me get into it, I, I'm probably going to ask to roll the tape from the, uh, mm -hmm. the briefing that uh, Chief Dean Smith gave. And I think uh, Chief Smith really summarizes it well, and I think that says a lot. And then I can talk about where else we're going from there. So let's hear from Chief Smith on this issue. This is a tragedy, and I wish it didn't happen here in our community. It's my hope that we can prevent things like this. We never want to have these occur. It's also my hope that this community reaches out and, and, and allows DCI the time and the opportunity that they need in order to conduct their investigation. Emily, whenever there's a loss of life, there's certainly something that has to be looked at very seriously. And uh, I, I applaud Chief Smith in um, being willing to, uh, to open the department up, um, be very transparent about what's going on. Uh, but there are certain laws that are required to do, uh, to follow in this, and the Department of Criminal Investigation, DCI, they essentially become the police department now in this incident. So they're going to be conducting an investigation uh, we're, once DCI has information that they can release, they will release it. Uh, and uh, we, we won't get it until the public is prepared to get it. So uh, once that information's out, DCI will put that out. But generally, these you can expect a, at least a whole month before anything's going to come out. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll all be determined by DCI. Uh, the body cameras uh, that were uh, on scene at the incident those are turned over to DCI, so you know we haven't seen any of those uh, those tapes. So we'll be able to look at those later on, uh, and uh, and people will be able to see that. We certainly want to be transparent about what's going on, uh, and it's it's a tragic. Uh, we lost a resident in our community, mm -hmm. and uh, and as Chief said, it's a tragedy. You don't want to ever see it happen, um, and it's probably one of our our worst nightmares in terms of providing public safety. Um, so we're going to take a look at this and. Uh, let DCI run its investigation and reach whatever conclusions are appropriate. Okay. Well, thank you for the update, Mark, on that. Um, to see the full press uh, conference, I believe that has not yet been posted. A lot of the news channels did cover it, so you can find it on Facebook, online, um, and uh, I guess just stay tuned for more information from our police department. Uh, now it's that time of the show where viewers have the chance to ask their city manager anything they want about things that are going on right here in the Oshkosh community. So let's go ahead and take a look at what our question mark is this week. All right, so question this week, Mark, is what are the criteria for being a neighborhood? And this was part of a, a, a cluster of questions from someone on Facebook. Um, so they were looking for a map. They want to know how they get their names, how the boundaries are decided. So it was kind of an overall question is all about neighborhoods. What, how do you yeah, become a neighborhood? <laughs> the screen would have been filled with the questions, yes. but they were great questions. So we really appreciate that. Uh, you know, how to form a neighborhood. Uh, Anything within our City of Oshkosh Healthy Neighborhood Initiative is really based on residents, a uh, resident-based approach. Mm -hmm. um, resident leaders work with a team of their fellow neighbors who are committed to forming a neighborhood. They decide the name of the neighborhood. Uh, they, uh, and that's done at a consensus at the neighborhood meetings. If you show up, you have a vote. I mean, mm -hmm. it's that simple. Um, the boundaries are really set up in the same manner. Uh, there was uh, some of the groups that actually split off because they thought they were too big. So they get to make all those decisions, and then we'll we'll assist them with it. Uh, someone said that the, we we don't want the neighborhood, uh, the geographic area, to be too large because you want right. it to be manageable. And what we've seen is maybe 400 parcels is about uh, is about as big as you want to get. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, Shelley Renke over at Greater Oshkosh Healthy Neighborhoods Incorporated. Go H and I. Yep. They uh, that's our the nonprofit group that the community's formed. The city's provided some support to it, and we provide support to the neighborhood associations as well. And so those are all the things that that go into uh, forming a neighborhood. 
Definitely. So a lot of great information. Check out the city website. It's all right there. We're very uh, happy to help out and answer questions. And like Mark said, it's all about it's all about you. So you got to get it started. Talk to your neighbors and form your neighborhood. It's wonderful. Um, so if you'd like to send a question to Mark, you can send it to us on Twitter, Facebook, or email it to us, and he will answer it on the next episode of City Manager's Report. And on that note, we're going to kind of segue from question mark into our break, which is a highlight reel of the Ferry Crossing Neighborhood Association. So let's go ahead and take a look at that while we take a break. If you want to have a say in what's happening in your community, getting involved in a neighborhood association is a really easy way because the city is talking with people in the neighborhood to find out what they want and the Healthy Neighborhoods programs takes our input and gets us what we want in our neighborhoods, not necessarily just what's on the city plans. And I've expanded the neighbors that I know. We had a lot of the close neighbors that we knew. And through the Neighborhood Association, I know people all around, which is nice. This is a very big block, so when my kids are going to be old enough to like bike around the block, it's a big area that I can't see them, and it'll be nice to know that there are people everywhere that can look out for my kids and know where they belong. The city gives Neighborhood Associations money to plan events, and it's what whoever comes to the meetings is what gets a say in what you're doing. And if you want to do something that you find interesting, go to the meeting. And then also with the Great Neighborhood Program, you can ask for funding to do anything. We're getting like safer crosswalks in our neighborhood and we got a butterfly garden and it's stuff that the city just wouldn't have thought of or wouldn't have touched and it's the neighbors who came together and said, this is what we want. Our light posts were all fiberglass and you got slivers from them and a lot of people in the neighborhood were concerned about it. They got together at a neighborhood meeting and said, this is something we want and the city did it within two years. All the playground equipment was replaced and that's the reason that the Neighborhood Association here started in the first place was concern over the playground equipment. If you want something done, just form a Neighborhood Association and get it done. It's pretty easy actually. Not a big time commitment. It's like ours is one meeting every three months and then every now and then an activity. So just get involved with your Neighborhood Associations. Welcome back to City Manager's Report. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Common Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, August 8th, 2017. First thing we want to talk about is a proclamation mark, and that is for Civility Month. Tell us about that. Well, several years ago, the city uh, joined with a local group that was really uh, pushing a civility, uh, awareness of civility. So uh, it's really just reaffirming our commitment to the civility pledge that council adopted a few years ago and, and encouraged the rest of the city to even in disagreement, uh, do it in a civil fashion. And um, I think it's been working very well and looking forward to continuing that. Wonderful. And then moving on, we've got a couple of presentations, a couple of mid-year updates, one from Greater Oshkosh Healthy Neighborhoods and one from Greater Oshkosh Economic Development Corporation. Uh, tell us about what some of those updates might look like. Well, a lot of what you just saw during our commercial <laughs> break is an idea of what we're doing. So Shelley Renke will be there to just give a mid-year update on what the neighborhood associations are doing uh, on sort of the big picture and then on the, the smaller level, what the individual groups are doing. But it's engaging neighbors uh, just like... Uh, uh, just like the commercial said. So uh, we're looking forward to uh, getting that update and uh, and where we go from here in terms of improving our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. and, and then, then Go EDC. Go EDC. They've been busy. They've been very busy. <laughs> and of course, you know, the, it's more than just the arena, but absolutely we want to talk about some of our economic development initiatives, how we're reaching out uh, to, to businesses about their needs, uh, workforce issues, getting uh, qualified workers is a big issue with them. And... Uh, and then talking about uh, where, what's next after the, saw, after the arena, how else does the Sawdust District get developed and, and what their role will be. 
Excellent. So a lot of great updates in the presentation portion of the meeting. So then moving on after that, there will be a public hearing, and that's on the submittal of 2017 Community Development Block Grant Action Plan, what many of us know as CDBG. Um, what exactly does the CDBG do, Mark? Well, the uh, Community Development Block Grant Program has been in existence uh, since the Nixon administration in 1974. Mm. And the whole idea is to... Uh, put uh, resources into areas primarily with low and moderate income people and improve the condition of the neighborhood. They're called block grants because they're given to communities in a, in a big block and the community decides what priorities they'll have. Kind of like a, a bigger version of what we do with our neighborhoods. But uh, we have to have a public input session and this hearing is part of that public input. Where, here's where we think the priorities are going to be for the coming year and get input from the public if if we're on the right track or if there's any other uses of our community development block grant dollars that may be more appropriate but it's getting that input and I think that's important. Very important so it's great to have those public hearings and get an idea of uh, what people are thinking about that. Moving down into the consent agenda we have an award bid for a contract for parking lot construction. And this is for the parking lots of the Oshkosh Public Library and the Fire Department Station 16. So kind of just a um, FYI for people here. We have an annual uh, portion of our capital improvement budget that's for parking lot improvements. And we evaluate our parking lots and decide which ones are most in need uh, and can and really get the most bang for the buck by, by improving them at the appropriate time. So the library, we, we really haven't done anything in that parking lot since uh, the library was uh, redone in the mid-90s, so it's, it's well overdue. And then Fire Station 16, we also have to take a look at our city facilities, but uh, the one over there on uh, South Washburn near 9th, those ideas are to make sure that we keep our parking lots in good shape so that they don't deteriorate to the point of having to completely reconstruct them. Mm -hmm. And this will be done end of 2017? That'll be done this year. Okay. Yeah, this is just asphalt, it'll be pretty easy. Uh, this will be done by fall. Excellent. Well, thank you for that update. Under new ordinances, Mark, we've got a couple of items, uh, somewhat related, I guess, is the closure of West Murdoch Ave from Algoma Boulevard to Vinland Street, and then also the closure of East Murdoch Ave from Harrison Street to Bowen Street. Now, the West Murdoch Ave is, that's a biggie. Tell us about that one. Well, the com street's gonna be completely closed uh, for about a six week period, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be around August 14th. We'll get the word out to that, uh, but Murdoch Avenue actually has a, a huge 48 inch sewer crossing there that when you are digging that big a sewer that deep, uh, you need to close the whole road. Not unlike what was done over there on Oshkosh Ave Avenue a few weeks ago. So uh, this is gonna be from Algoma to Vinland. It's gonna disrupt a lot of east-west traffic on the north side. Certain, certainly gonna disrupt traffic over to uh, Oshkosh North High School. And so we want to get the word out so people are aware of it and why, because uh, why would you close a street like that? Mm -hmm. This is such an important street, it requires council approval, so we're, we're getting that approval next Tuesday. Okay, so yeah, be on the lookout for those detour routes. The signs should be going up uh, very shortly after approval. And uh, like, like we always say with road closures, just make sure to plan ahead, be cautious, and thanks for your patience. So then East Murdoch, kind of the same situation going on over there? Yeah, uh, East Murdoch, this Harrison to Bowen, uh, over by the, the railroad tracks, by Piggly Wiggly. So if you're heading over to like the Piggly Wiggly store, uh, you're gonna have a little trouble getting there. So be forewarned. New York Avenue was just redone. It's, it's a wonderful street. I was driving around the other night for neighborhood night out and used that as the, uh, the way around to get on Murdoch. It worked very, very well. So I encourage people to, to consider New York Avenue because it's in a lot better shape <laughs> than it was before. And uh, again, this is one of those things, uh, a lot of utility work getting redone. So once you start getting to the utilities, you gotta dig up the street a lot and you don't wanna be in that construction zone anyway, unless you, right. unless you work or uh, live around there. Definitely. Okay, so yes, like I said, be prepared for that and be on the lookout for more information coming out on our website and Facebook pages. Under new resolutions, Mark, dissolve tax incremental district number seven, Southwest Industrial Park. Now, um, this is a big one. We've heard a lot about the Southwest Industrial Park. Kind of tell us what exactly this is and, you know, everything related to that. This is a wonderful success story about how tax increment financing works, uh, why it exists, and uh, this uh, TIF district dates back to the early 1990s, 
and it has been, it, we call it the mother of all TIF districts because it has done so much for the city. Uh, this area that you see here, that's just what was the beginning of the Southwest Industrial Park. So you can see the boundaries. In there you've got Bemis, you've got uh, Silver Star Brands, you've got so many other uh, businesses in that immediate area. Mm -hmm. Pepsi, um, uh, just tons of other businesses that have located there, expanded and created jobs. Here are just some of the statistics from just this area that's highlighted in yellow. $143 million in value, 120 companies, 4,000 employees. And even beyond this district, it's also, this tax recommend district has also uh, been a donor district mm. to other districts in the, in the downtown area, the struggling ones, the ones that uh, really needed rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when you think of Marion Road, when you think of the ones that are downtown that have helped uh, remove some of the old factories and restore them, this has been a wonderful success story. It's one of the most successful TIF districts in the entire state and certainly the most successful TIF district in the city's history. But mm -hmm. alas, after 27 years, we have to close it. And that's uh, and so we uh, bid farewell to TIF 7, but it's done a wonderful uh, uh, service to the city. Now that $143 million goes back on the tax roll. Okay. So that will, be, that will help everybody uh, over time. That will help reduce... Uh, and reduce the tax burden because it'll spread it around to that 143 million. So we're very pleased and proud of that TIF district. I wasn't there when it was created, but we've certainly reaped the benefits certainly in the time I've been with the city. Well, how cool is it to hear those stats after, um, you know, all the talk about TIDs and TIFs and uh, tax increment, all this stuff, um, it kind of goes to show it kind of backs up all this going on here. Yeah, and, we, and this is what we think about when we're doing TIF districts, so mm -hmm. we're very pleased with that. And uh, I think it does serve as a great example of what a TIF can do. It really is a wonderful economic development tool for the city. Excellent. And then, Mark, the last item we want to discuss on the agenda for August 8th is a report on the committee regarding the Oregon Street reconstruction. Now, a lot of us might not be familiar on this project or this um, idea here, so kind of take us through what exactly it is. Oregon Street is getting reconstructed eventually to put in a new uh, store or sanitary sewer from the river all the way out towards past Oshkosh Corporation. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of growth area to the south that we have to prepare for for the future uh, and we need to resize our mains. As we are in the downtown area, it's about we're reconstructing the street along with the sewer, so how wide is it going to be? And uh, really you have to take a look at what our needs are in the long run. And when you think about things that are happening in the downtown area, trying to make it more pedestrian friendly, uh, so we're actually looking at replacing what you see there is three lanes uh, as you at the intersections, one left, one straight, one right. We're really talking about having one lane that's straight and to the right and the other one to the left. Um, we don't believe this will impact traffic negatively because uh, the traffic movements for right turns are not that great in these areas, um, but it'll also increase the size of the sidewalk from about seven and a half feet to about 10 feet. And as the sawdust district takes off, as, as things happen on Oregon Street, we'll want more capacity for, for pedestrians as much as we want it for traffic. And so the Bike and Ped Committee and the Traffic Review Board have both chimed in on it. A split decision, so I don't know how much it's going to help council, but I think the, the discussion that took place is very important and the committee's report back to council will be important as well. Wonderful. So we look forward to even more detail at the council meeting, and thank you for the update, Mark. That's going to do it for this show of uh, City Manager's Report. So as always, Mark, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. Happy to do it. So again, the council meeting is this Tuesday, August 8th at 6 p.m. You can watch it live on GovTV and on our website at oshkoshmedia.org, or you can listen to it on 101.9 Oshkosh FM, which is also online and on the TuneIn Radio app. Make sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter for all of your community and government programming and updates, or check out our YouTube channel for the meeting replays and past episodes of our programs. And don't forget, if you have a question for City Manager Mark Roloff, send it to us on Twitter, post it on our Facebook page, or email us, and he'll answer it on the next episode of City Manager's Report. Once again, thanks so much for joining us on CMR today, and we'll see you next time.